What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mortgage Coach Tuesday interview. I am coming live out of Irvine, California. I will not be on most of this call, but I could. I just had to help kick it off. We had too many amazing uh, leaders in the mortgage industry for me not to at least say hi to everyone. I am doing a full day of strategic planning with the Mortgage Coach team. So Todd Bookspan, my partner in crime on our Friday Mastermind, is going to lead today's call. What's up, Todd? You know, I am uh, super excited to see this uh, awesome crowd. You guys can't see it, but I've got all, all uh, six of us on here, and it's just cool to see um, such a great crew. It was fun to hang out with these guys in Miami, and now it's uh, great to be here live and uh, looking forward to sharing with all of you who are joining us. So, so if you're on this call live, please, let's make this the most interactive call we've done. That means asking questions. If you're on Facebook Live, post a question below in comments. If you're in Zoom and you're live, post a question in chat. But questions are good. We want to get a lot of them. And, and we want to have them not only so we can answer them in this call, we want to make sure that as we do future calls around how to build your personal brand in a way that makes you more successful, um, we want to make sure that we're here to bring that value to you. So I'm going to hand it off to Todd. Uh, I do want to thank everybody that participates in the Mortgage Coach community, whether it's live or whether it's our recording. Super grateful for you, just seeing all the great people we have on the call and all the great people that signed up. Just grateful to be part of this. Todd, I'll hand it off to you and can't wait to listen to the recording. Awesome. All right. So those of you who don't know what you're in for today, you're in for just a huge treat. So um, we've got uh, five of us here who are all on panels at Gary Vanyarchuk and Vanyar Experiences Agent 2021 in Miami um, just a couple of weeks ago. And it's a super impactful uh, event, right? It's a, it's a one day event where you've got people from real estate, mortgage, insurance, and auto all coming together who really are going to share the best ideas uh, and transparently with the group. And so um, what my goal today is to moderate what, um, what all these folks learned. And our goal is to share that with you. I had some, some of you who posted in our Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind community some questions. Um, but what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go around to the crew, I'm gonna have them just do a 60 second introduction of themselves, what it is they do in their day job, and uh, what panel they were on at, the, at Agent 2021. And then after that, I'll go around, I'll get each of their biggest takeaways. And then after that, we'll open it up to some Q&A and just discussion amongst us. So make sure if you guys are on Facebook Live that you are posting questions in there. And then also those of you who are here in Zoom would love, Love, love seeing some uh, comments in the chat there. But if not, we're going to have just a conversation among the five of us. So uh, ladies first, Kristen, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Kristen Messerly, and I'm the founder of Cultural Outreach and editor of Mortgage Women magazine and moderated a couple panels at Agent 2021. Um, so yeah, excited to be here. You know, I love that because yeah, you were on not just one, but two panels and she was like the moderators where they put the really smart person. We got two moderators on here. And so, um, so that's, that's really awesome. Um, we've got now Jason may need a little more time because he's got like 27 different businesses going on right now and a really cool chair he's sitting in, but uh, go ahead, Jason Frazier, do the quick intro. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Don. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks first of all uh, for having me here. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be among the greats of the industry, and, and also enjoy meeting all of you guys uh, at uh, at Agent Twenty Twenty One. So I'm Jason Frazier. I am the CEO and founder of the Agent Marketer, which is a marketing, coaching, and training program uh, for the real estate industry, agents, and loan officers. I was a mortgage executive for 10 years, holding roles as a chief strategy officer, chief marketing officer, and chief information officer all at the same time. As Todd alluded to, I'm also uh, the chief marketing officer currently for Wise Agent, uh, which is a real estate CRM. And I'm also the co-founder of the Industry Syndicate, which is real estate's first media network. I mean, come on, look at that. That is a, that's a lot of cool stuff. Um, I, was, uh, I was honored to be on the panel with uh, two great friends. So uh, Jeff Zimfer, go ahead and introduce uh, you and your current roles. Yeah, certainly. Thank you. Pleasure to be here, especially amongst such uh, other people that I look up to in the industry. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, by day, full-time gig, national sales trainer and coach at Movement Mortgage. By night, Secret Superpower is host of the uh, Mortgage Marketing Radio podcast. Check it out, mortgagemarketingradio.com. That's it. Back to you. Awesome. And then, uh, you know, I saved our other moderator and uh, my good friend, none other than John Downs, as the last to introduce himself. 
Yeah, no, so you bookended with the super smart panelists or uh, moderators. So good job on that, Todd. So, uh, so I'm John Downs. I am just a loan officer uh, here in D.C. Uh, is my day job. My night job is kind of stalking everyone else on this panel so I can learn more and be better at my day job. You know, I, I like that. And, um, you know, it was kind of interesting because, yeah, you were uh, one of the produce few true full-time producers that were that were on a panel so there's some great takeaways um i guess uh, i should probably introduce myself i think most of you know me i'm todd bookspan i uh, co-lead the mortgage productivity mastermind group with uh dave savage we founded it oh gosh a few years ago now and then uh, my day job is uh running win by noon and just having all sorts of cool cool uh opportunities right now uh, through that that we're uh, rolling out, including our new loan officer think tank. So uh, check out WBNThinkTank.com if you're uh, interested in uh, something, something new and fun. And, um, and so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of tee it up and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of probably hose John Downs at the end because he's going to be the last guy, but um, I'm, we're going to go around real quick and let everyone just do their, uh, their number one takeaway. And I'm just going to go in that same order. So Kristen jump right in. All right, my big takeaway, and this sounds very boring because I think we hear it all the time, but it really, it's about finding your personal voice and, um, and producing more content around that personal voice. Um, I think it was uh, Jake Failing that I interviewed that said, find your, he's a VP of marketing for movement and was on one of the panels. And he said, if you find your voice, find your personal brand. And I, I feel like the more that I, I can even understand my own personal voice. What do I, what story do I want to tell and, and just find ways to continue to produce more and more content around that story um, in an, a very authentic way. That was also a common theme everywhere is about authenticity and, and, you know, storytelling with that authentic voice. So, so I love it. And I should say this to the other panelists, if you guys want to, you know, comment on or ask Kristen questions, you know, feel to feel free to jump in. My goal is to have this end up being more of a discussion, but I thought I would roll us out with our top point. So go ahead, Jason, jump in with yours. Yeah. So, so mine is, is that the answer is the answer. And that was just something common that Gary had talked about just before the conference and during the conference is that he could come up with other stuff that he truly doesn't believe in. That sounds new. That sounds different but it all comes down to the same deal, right? Like create more content, use the tools that you have. They work like mortgage coach and other tools and stuff like that. They absolutely work. You just have to focus on them. Stop looking at trying to find new videos, new books and all these new things. It's great to learn, but that should only be about 10% of your time. 90% of your time should be on focus on mastering the tools that you already have. The content marketing strategies, putting out uh, the content on the channels that deserve it. You know, this is, you know, knowing your audience. These are the things that you need to focus on. Stop trying to find all these different things that are going to eventually just bring you back to the same thing as you actually have to go out and do it and execute it. And that is what needs to be done. Yep. Execution is the key. I had the opportunity to have brunch with a small group back in March. And um, there was a young woman who was in the esthetician space and she was in her early twenties. And she said to Gary, thank you so much for the content you provide a year ago. I could barely afford a sandwich and this year I'll make six figures. And he just looked at her and said, no, I don't thank me. Thank yourself. Millions consume my content and you're one of the handful that actually executes. So I love, 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 love that. Jeff, how about you, buddy? Yeah, yeah, thank you. So quick shout out to those uh, watching us live. I'm just uh, kind of doing dual duty for you here, Todd, because I know you got a lot of stuff coming at you. So shout out to Jewel March, Ginger Bell, Bill Thompson, uh, Adam Black, Rick Sure. what is up, Mortgage Coach Community. Um, one takeaway, that's hard. I got 14 written down. How much time do I have? Um, my bottom line, I guess if I had to choose one, is, is here's the, the variable of effectiveness or variable of success is content plus media. Uh, meaning, and uh, I know Jason, you kind of alluded to this as well, is that none of us are producing enough content. Um, and, and, and those of us that are producing some, I'm sure in comparison, we feel, you know, compared to Gary or whatever, it's like, oh my God, how am I ever going to get there? So I, I think, you know, let's not compare ourselves to somebody like Gary Vaynerchuk in terms of content. Let's compare our, ourselves to like what our best effort is. So it's content plus media. Um, content is a variable of effectiveness of your ads. So a lot of people are looking at, hey, running Facebook ads and things like that. How do I make that more successful? How do I get to the consumer first? So yes, part of your overall strategy is going to be uh, paid traffic, right? Ads, Facebook, for example. But one of the things Gary said is that produce more content, your ads would be more successful. People would uh, uh, be more likely to respond. You'll probably reduce your ad spend. And bottom line is if you're 
online presence is a graveyard if you don't exist. Uh, and you're trying to you know, spend money running ads, that's gonna work negatively affect, uh, against you. So first and foremost, personal brand. All right, I snuck another one in there. <laughs> personal brand will be right, the, the big differentiator uh, and, and, and the content that you produce that goes along with your personal brand, so. Love it, back. love it. All right, John, so we, we stuck you with the anchor role, so hopefully uh, you got another great idea because Jeff already told us he had 14. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm done. No, so, um, you know, so I had really two big takeaways. One takeaway is I think everyone next year should go. <laughs> that was one big takeaway. Um, I actually like hanging out with all of you and the people that we see as mortgage professionals on all the ads that get served to us, run a better business, you know, do better stuff, have better social media ad targeting, all that stuff. Those people are there, right? <laughs> like Jeff and Jason, like I got to talk to them. Like it, it, to me, that was pretty awesome. Uh, so that was takeaway number one. Takeaway number two is, um, is that your job is your brand. So there was a young lady that jumped up and asked a question and she was basically like, I get you think we should do all this stuff and be insanely visible on all the appropriate platforms and market properly and advertise properly and produce more content. But I've got a, I've got a job to do, right? I've got home inspections. I've got to show houses. And he pretty much just looked at her and he's like, no, your job is your brand. He's like, your job is your brand. And that, that one sentence sent my mind going a completely different direction in the mortgage business where, where I didn't really see that, right? Like, well, let me take one step back. Uh, and then now I feel like I'm rambling. So uh, why is it that we see really good, competent loan officers that are awesome with borrowers, have all the knowledge in the planet, they have the best mortgage coach out there and they fail. And yet you get some other guy that's kind of a, idiot, right? Shouldn't be like messes up loans, you know, gives bad advice, but then that person does a lot of business. What's the difference? Visibility. That's it. One person is good at being visible and one person isn't. So that's kind of what my big takeaway was, right? Like find ways to build internal scale and make my number one job building my brand. You know, and I, I love that. And I wonder if that was that same lady in the yellow dress and who yeah. was talking about how busy she was, right? So my big takeaway was uh, this is mortgage coach, and even though Gary swears a lot, and I, I, uh, I was laughing because Jeff and I run a on a live last week, and I and I swore for the first time on Facebook because my kids don't think I swear. Um, but he said, "Stop doing stupid stuff." We'll just say. And what Gary said is, we all spend at least an hour a day doing stupid stuff. And one of the criticisms that people have for him is that he works a ton, right? He's super laser focused. He works, and then he unplugs. And people always use that as an excuse. I don't have time. I don't have time. And this there was a unique pitch because I've heard him talk about adding an extra hour to your day before, although he says if you're going to have to add an extra hour, only do it if your body can handle it. So he, he did actually throw in a little bit of health. However, he really pointed out what I think is true for all of us. He said he does it too. He says, yeah, I spent an hour a day doing stupid stuff. And I think there's all that time. And so I was telling these guys beforehand this morning, I wanted to go on to the Facebook post I'd done before. Say, and I just want to say, hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys all at nine, which I did. But then Eight minutes later, I got done after surf, you know, surfing through my, my Facebook feed, and that wasn't my intention. My intention was to get on and get off. We all get sucked into stupid stuff, so just stop doing it was, uh, was my takeaway because then you have time to do all the other things that you just heard these other uh, panelists talk about. And so um, we've got a lot of you on both Zoom and on uh, Facebook. I'm seeing some questions come in, so I'll just start throwing some questions out to the crowd and whoever wants to jump in and may get a little bit awkward. Um, but you know, the, the main questions we've been getting is how are you guys using video? Like what, what are the strategies that you're using? And then we'll also switch into what tools are we all using? That's what people would like to know. So um, if someone wants to raise their hand and start talking, go for it. Cause my goal is to shut up and let you guys do all the magic. So I'll, I'll just jump in there real quick for video. The one thing that a lot of you should be doing uh, on video is focusing on doing vertical video, right? Now stories is one thing and you could be doing that. But vertical video, especially on uh, platforms like Facebook or Instagram, the reason why you wanna be focusing on vertical video is because when you are posting that type of content within Facebook, especially, especially if you're gonna run ads against them, they don't look like ads. And then also vertical video in the newsfeed takes up close to 90% of the screen size. And when they tap on it, it takes up 100%. It doesn't do that for when you do landscape videos and it doesn't do that for when you do square videos, square videos being the next best thing. So I know people will like, well, it doesn't look right on desktop. We'll understand that only 7% of people 
use desktop for Facebook. 93% of it is done, uh, on, is done on mobile. And one in every five minute on Facebook is, is mobile or mobile, sorry, one in five, every social media mobile minute is on Facebook. So do vertical video. It's more natural. People will tend to watch vertical video more because they don't feel like it's an advertisement. They don't feel like it's something, they feel like it's more of a, of a, a you know, you're, you're, you're just basically documenting your life or telling a story. So vertical video is something that I've been doing a lot more of. It's something that I coach my members to do a lot more of because that is generally where you're going to get most, uh, most bang for your buck. And that just means holding up your phone this way, right? Correct. Okay. Verticals, just hold your phone straight up. For those of you who aren't quite sure what the difference is, I saw a video yesterday on Facebook Live where the person was literally sideways. I was, that was awesome. <laughs> you know, and a good point about that, Todd, is I think, and I'm reading some of the thread here, is part of what keep, keeps people from uh, getting started, since video seems to be a thread right here, uh, part of what holds people back is fear of screwing up, fear of looking bad. Uh, and I'm sure every one of us here on this panel could acknowledge that we've all screwed up and looked like morons trying to use this technology. I do it every single day. I think the point is that's how you learn. You learn by doing. So carve out some time, test some stuff out. Speaking of Facebook Live, you know, you can actually go Facebook Live uh, privately on your own personal profile page. Nobody else will see that. It's a test that you can do. Just go Facebook Live with your small group of friends, whatever. The point is get started. Because, you know, the youngsters like John Downs and the Kristen Messerly's of the world are going to blow the socks off the average loan officer who's 53, 57 years old if they don't get on board and start creating um, engaging, you know, content. Because that's what people are doing, you know, the first time home buyers. That's what they're doing is they're, they're shopping, they're bouncing around an average of three different sites. They're not um, loyal to any particular big brand name yet. Um, but they are looking for somebody to be a guide and to help them uh, at the right time in the process. So... My two the cents there about just getting started. Good. Just to go back to uh, my big takeaway around being authentic. And I, I think it, it's hard because we want to, as, I think as professionals who are aggressively moving their business forward, we want everything to be done well. And that makes sense, but it, it has to be, you know, we don't always say the right things in day-to-day -day life. And that's what people want to see. They don't want to see someone that's a, uh, cookie cutter, you know, picture perfect type person that you can, that's not relatable. And I think to your point about first time home buyers, we're really wanting to be able to trust someone and video allows you to do that. It's not even necessarily like about having a sales pitch or anything like that. It's about being able to connect and build trust. Well, and it, it's the authentic you, right? I mean, that's the, that's the other part of it. You know, I kind of always joke, right? I'm never going to be good looking and young like John Downs. I'm always going to be 50 with wrinkles and gray hair. And so you've got to get on there and be okay with it. And even though I did Toastmasters and I'm not supposed to say so and um and all that kind of stuff, I say it all the time. And I've done plenty of Facebook Lives now where I'm like, ooh, did I really just say that? Like that just didn't sound very intelligent. And ironically, though, those are the, those are the ones that people tend to gravitate towards because they're like, oh, I can relate to Todd. He's He's not as smart as I thought he thought he was going to sound. So I don't know. How about you, John? You know, uh, I agree with every word you said. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh. <laughs> the first part. No, the um, so um, you know the be authentic and the be you part. Again, so when you think of video, I think there's a lot of people that think. I need to do video and man, they are awkward to Jeff's point, you know, where you just, you pull up your phone and you're like, Hey, I'm supposed to do video. And this year I'm going to do more video. And, and I think you need to think about your customer and think about what they want to hear. I don't think they want to hear that you want to do more video. Quite honestly, I, I don't think there's a lot of things that they want to hear that we as mortgage professionals talk about. Um, I think they want to know you, they want to know your thoughts. And when I think of content that, that we can do, cause I'm deep in this reflection myself, like I think I have a lot to say, but then I also think no one wants to hear that. But how about yesterday I had a, a situation where people wrote contracts and they were poorly represented by the real estate agent. I should have pulled my phone up and done a Facebook live and be like, man, I'm in a tough spot right now, folks. I'm dealing with people that are being misrepresented, their agents are idiots. They don't, they're gonna lose these houses. What do I do in this case? Like it stinks, people, I really wish they would use more energy in auditing and reviewing their, right? Like that could be a thing that you sort of rant about that's a real time thing that will resonate everywhere. And I think we have so many things that happen in the mortgage business every day. We could have endless content if we just realize that all we have to do is speak our mind. 
I don't know if that made a lot of sense. But Document your day, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what Gary, that was my big takeaway from Agent 2021 last year when I went was to document your day. And so I've got a second iPhone and I use it all the time to record myself from over here. But what I found was, is then I'm like, well, now I've got like a hundred hours of stuff and I need to find some high school kid to cut it and put it up on. So the reason I'm starting to do so many Facebook lives is, you know, it's not perfect and it's not cut, it's getting done. And, you know, I think that's the big thing is, you know, as, as Jason was saying, I mean, there's the answer is more content and make it easy on yourself. But I think that would have been great, John, other than the fact that those two realtors might not have appreciated you standing out there calling them idiots. But uh, what do yeah. you think? Jeff? I just want yeah. to raise my hand. <laughs> I saw you raise your hand. Oh, so you're a, okay. Never mind. All right, Kristen, you started jumping in before yeah, I stepped so over. Sorry about that. It's interesting talking about this because it, we do have to be careful about what we say to some degree. You know, I mean, I I was speaking today at an Arvest sales rally about social media, and they have a really tight compliance policy. And so uh, they're like, you know, how do we even talk about what we do if we can't share if we're in this compliant kind of thing? But it's not about sharing the business; it's about sharing who you are. And so I think you know, people get caught up in, well, how will people know to get a mortgage with me? But um, when I was interviewing Jake from Movement, Jake Failing, he talked about how he, he was like, if you're the coffee guy, you know, you love coffee, you take pictures and interview coffee people and you're a, guy, a coffee guy that happens to do mortgages or they do tons of cool t-shirts. And he was like, are we in the t-shirt business? Or are we in the mortgage business? Who knows? But people love us because they, they connect with our brand, you know? So I think it really needs to be much more personal. And when we talk about authenticity, that's a component of it. It's about who are you as a person and write down some of those themes and document those. But it's not always about, you know, a loan or a mortgage. Well, yeah. loans are boring, right? I mean, people don't that's care so about that, right? They're, they care about the other pieces about you. And then, you know, again, we're talking about Gary Vee, right? Jab, jab, right hook. I mean, and you got to be you, be you, be you, add value, add value. And then you, at some point you can, then you can be John and say, yeah, I'm standing out here representing clients and I'm trying to save the day because these realtors are idiots. So I just wanted to jump in real quick. What John said was spot on is that when those things happen and you know, maybe, yeah, you got to be careful with what you say, but that's part of the business. And honestly, I think if there ever was a reality show, like, like almost like the office for mortgage, people would watch it because people would actually see a lot of interesting stuff that happens behind the scenes. And people need to understand that reality TV got a lot of attention for a reason. People might think that their own lives aren't that interesting or what they do for a living isn't that interesting. I think we've proven as a society that we'll watch pretty much anything. And so you may not think it's interesting, but it's going to be interesting to other people. And then as far as the people that are worried about like, well, I need to be polished. I need to work on it. Uh, the people that I've seen do the best are the ones that look the most uncomfortable because, and there's one simple reason for that is that consumers or an audience at large identifies with imperfection. They don't identify with the perfect life coming out of the nice car, private jet, all that other stuff. They identify with the real life people. Again, going back to the reality TV before it became what it is today. That's the reason why. So don't worry about it. I guarantee you, if you do a perfectly polished lighting is perfect, everything is great video. Then you do another one where a cat jumps like in front of you or your picture falls down behind you or anything like that. That second video is the one that's going to get the more views. It's going to get more shared. And that's the one that people are going to remember, not the one that's fully polished. That's, that's great advice. Um, so we're getting some, we're getting some questions again on the specific video equipment. So do any of you guys have video equipment suggestions? For, for the mic, so like, for example, the mic I'm using right now for your computer, uh, like your, your desktop or laptop would be the Blue Yeti mic. Um, definitely, it's, it's, and it, you could get it sometimes on Amazon. It's, they have sales for like 100 bucks. I think full retail is like 129 For mobile or DSLR, you use a Rode mic. It's R-O-D-E. Uh, and they actually have Rode, mini Rode mics for your phones too. Uh, and little mini camera rigs so you could use your phones. Don't worry about the equipment, right? I think Gary V has proven that. And before he became Gary V, he still used his phone and other stuff. Uh, and people now use their phones the majority of the time. The phone camera quality is pretty dang good and it's only going to get better. So don't trip you, yourself uh, up on the content or I mean on the equipment. Worry about the content because as long as the content's good, they could hear you and they could generally see you. The video equipment doesn't make a difference. 
Well, I think the mic is always important. So remember that part of it. Yeah, you know, I have I, to hear you. Um, <laughs> you have to be able to be heard. Yeah, I had um, I had a Adam on my team videoing from the audience with the road mic on a on a SLR, whatever you call those Nikon cameras that I bought a refurbished one off of uh, Amazon. But but I also had an iPhone that I hit just the voice memo on with a, you can plug in a mic and I literally just clipped it on my lapel so that I could add better sound for what we're going to use to repurpose later. And it's like a $20 microphone I picked up on, on Amazon. And then the other thing you want to consider is lights. Um, and so um, I, I'll post the link later, but I've got a couple of those umbrella lights over here to, that's why I look so pasty white because my ceiling lights stink, but um, get good lights. If you're going to do something in your office, I think that would be my other recommendation. There's some of those ring lights and stuff like that. I haven't ever used one of those myself, but I've got the umbrella things here, which seem to do, to do a pretty good job. Hey, if I can jump in, this will give you time to look at some questions because I've been watching a few as well. For instance, um, so Lewis asks, what's the best time to do a Facebook Live? Um, so I want to put that out to the group here as well. I double check my internet connection here. Um, but I Look, Jeff's fading out. So I'll jump in. I say the best goal. time to do a live. Um, because there's various types of Facebook Lives and what's the goal of the Facebook Live, right? You could do a Facebook Live from an open house. Um, you can do a Facebook Live from your office doing a, just a, sh a, you know, a day in the life like John talked about, which by the way, quick note on that. Um, a lot of people struggle with content. What do I talk about? So John gave a great example of stories. You tell stories. Um, you tell stories about you know, your day and the frustrations and challenge, but also tell stories about wins, right? A client that you helped get in the house. Maybe you saved that deal. That's a great story to just talk about how one of the things you love about your job is the challenge and the opportunities. And guys, here's a great example of how that went down today. Boom, there's a story. Um, so back to the Facebook Live thing. I think you know, my big takeaway from the when's the best time, I don't get too hung up on when's the best time unless it's a very, like it's an event and it's been promoted, you know, like this, where there is a start time and an end time. Um, if you're just talking about going Facebook Live from a pure content standpoint, you just want to practice and exercise those muscles, go live when you have the time and the impulse to share something and go live. Um, that's it. Back to you guys. Go live now. How about the rest of you? Anyone yeah. else have an opinion on that or on the length of a live? So for, so one is, is test, T test different times of the day. And then also pay attention to your audience, like people in your network. When I say audience, that's people you're connected to on Facebook. When are they posting on Facebook? When are they commenting on Facebook? The times when they're on Facebook are the times when you want to go live. So I could say like, if I look across a whole scope that the best time of going live is probably around seven, seven thirty at night. But some people, it may be two thirty in the afternoon. Some people, it may be nine thirty in the morning or 10 in the morning, your audience by how many people come on, how many people go on live, we'll, we'll tell you exactly when the best time is because there isn't a really a best time. There's only best practices. So I would try it in the morning. I would say between nine and 11, try going live then, try going live, um, you know, maybe between 1.30 and three and then try going live between seven and nine and then just try different times and see where you get the most engagement. Then you found your time. Anyone have any suggestions on uh, personal page versus business page? Uh, I'll jump in on that, Todd, because I've been playing around with it quite a bit lately myself. And um, so <clears throat> just know that when I came back from Agent 2021, I, it was almost like I was supercharged with like 5,000 Tesla batteries. Like I came back like an animal to take over the world. And what I realized is that I actually had produced over the last year and a half a lot of content and I just never used it. And um, so as an example, you could write a blog and let's say then that blog, you also had a video. Well, the video goes to YouTube, the blog, you can take paragraphs and put it on LinkedIn. You can take sentences and put it on uh, Twitter and then sentences put it on Facebook, right? Like there's so many things you can do with just one piece of content uh, to keep recycling, recycling, recycling. Um, so I personally, uh, I basically took my personal page that had 1,800 friends. I had a business page that had 300 followers. I killed the business page. I migrated my personal to a, like a fan page, right? So now I have 1,800 followers. And now my personal messages are on my personal page and my business messages are on my business page. And then I'm putting legitimate money behind my business page. I'm probably right now spending 50 bucks a day testing stuff out. I, I want to take that up to about one to 150 in the next month or so. Um, and it's, a, the, the feedback's amazing. I put a 
podcast. I found some widget from Jason Frazier. Thank you for the idea on one of your uh, classes. I, f- I forget what it was, but it turned my podcast into a YouTube video. And then I put the YouTube video or I put that same video on Facebook and I've only advertised it now for two days. And I have over 900 minutes consumed of that podcast. And I have right. it targeted very specifically to first time home buyers. And I excluded real estate agents and mortgage professionals <laughs> uh, to get more hyper focus. So it, it's, so I believe the business page, I believe in the separation. I don't feel bad when my people see an ad from me, from my business. I don't think they necessarily want to see me promoting my business all the time personally. I think that's great. Hey, we're getting some questions, John, on that migration piece. Would you be okay volunteer that you and I just uh, do sometime uh, later this week, a quick live on Facebook that we throw in the mortgage coach productivity group? Um, I think that'd be good. All right. So we'll, we'll commit to that for those of you who are asking Um, any other thoughts from you, Kristen, on any of this, live stuff and the other things we got going on? No, to be totally transparent and authentic, I struggle the same, I mean, with the same thing. Like personally, it's very difficult for me to think, okay, let's go ahead and put this live because I'm constantly, I'm running a business and going to events and all these things. And, um, and I think I'm, you know, someone mentioned this before, but you, you are where you are and I have produced a ton of content. And so, you know, taking those baby steps and, and don't, I tend to be an extreme person and, and be like, okay, now I'm all in and, um, or it's nothing. And I'm working on kind of gradually getting there. But I do think that um, the, the loan officers and, and prof- mortgage real estate professionals I've worked with that have been really successful have also just kind of gradually gotten there. Like you're, you're not so black and white about everything. What about, um, I appreciate that transparency piece and, and it's, I mean, I think that's critical advice. Um, what about other apps? Are you guys using any other apps? We're getting questions like on bomb bomb or any, what are you guys using for your video editing apps, stuff like that? Yeah, sure. I'll throw in the mix. Uh, in terms of video, uh, if you're talking about video from your mobile phone, a couple of apps I'm experimenting with that I like are things like InShot. So that's I N S H O T. Just look at my phone here. InShot, uh, Vimly, which is V I or V E M E dot L Y. Um, Those are two apps that make it easy to on the fly record a video and then add some of the cool, you know, what you see nowadays is the header across the top and bottom and some emojis and graphics and stuff and maybe a a line that's like, you know, telling you how long the video is playing. And so those are two things that jump out for me right now at the top of my mind. Um, I know other people here uh, have some they use as well. So. I am a huge fan of BombBomb and, uh, and also Loom, L-O-O-M. Um, so those are, those are more for like client videos or if you text over a video to a real estate professional after you meet them or a client that whatever it is, you, you just bond so much more by sending that kind of personalized video and it's so easy and quick to create. And so Loom is free, BombBomb you pay for, but, um, and you know, there's just, that creates a connection that I think is really valuable. Yeah. So here's just all the ones that I wound up testing out. Um, uh, so InShot was mentioned, uh, Canva, but that's more for photos, Video Shop and Luma Fusion. And it's almost just as easy with iMovie. Uh, I am looking for a teenager to take care of all this stuff for me though. I just got my, my 16 year old yesterday. She did her, my first video for me and I'm using Adobe spark for the photo labeling and she's using the spark video. Although the spark video was a little bit funky with the fonts, she said, um, and it kept her up past her curfew last night. Cause she did send me a video after I was asleep. But when you start seeing my cool stuff, that's going to be my 16 year old. And she's just wanted me to know that she wasn't exactly like me, that she was a little more artistic than I was, but all right, you know what? It's going to get done. So think about that. So I'll just throw in a couple apps here. Flyer, that's F-L-Y-R. That's a great app. Um, uh, Jeff hit pretty much all the other good ones. Uh, Adobe Clip is another one that you could use. And then um, just got to make sure I remember. And then uh, Legend, which is a oldie but goodie, but it does some really quick, cool little images, overlays and text and some animation. And then what I use to do my video on my phone is a really cool app. It's called Movie Pro. And it allows you to do a lot of cool things. Plus, if you have an iPhone and you're using the Bluetooth AirPods, 
Um, it, it creates a really nice mic experience. So that's what I use when I create my videos is I use my AirPods for my mic. So I don't have to have something external, a road mic or anything else. And then I use movie, movie pro cause it's one of the few apps that will actually fully, uh, fully utilize the, uh, the audio from your AirPods. Love that. Love that. All right. So we've got a lot of questions rolling in. Keep them, uh, keep them coming. So we've talked a lot about Facebook. Um, who wants to jump in and give any Instagram advice? You know, I'll start maybe just because I'm brand new at Instagram. So in my house, for some reason, when I'm on Wi-Fi, Instagram doesn't work. So there's got to be a bug. I need to figure it out. But when I'm, so anyway, I never used it. So what I found out about Instagram is that there was a big chunk of people I've been looking for on Facebook that I couldn't find and a lot of real estate agents. And then once I switched over to Instagram, all of a sudden I found all those people that I couldn't find on Facebook. So that shows me that there's a big, huge segment of people that you probably want to target that are there. I've been using it only now for a week and a half. Uh, I'm probably having more fun with it than anything. Uh, but you know, that the use of the hashtags um, and then all of a sudden getting a message from someone uh, asking a question about what you'd say, I don't know. I'm, I'm still fascinated with it, but um, just have to make sure it works in your house. All right, who else? Kristen. I absolutely love Instagram. It's, I mean, that is where I feel like I, it, Facebook feels very noisy to me, but Instagram feels more communal and authentic. And um, you can do, you know, Facebook, I mean, Instagram stories in, in particular, um, but Instagram stories are, of course, the ephemeral content. It will disappear after 24 hours and um, you do quick little photos or videos wherever you are. And it, you're just, you are documenting your day. And it's, um, I think, shows people who you are uh, and you can engage a lot more. Um, but I think one thing that a lot of people don't pay attention to is engaging with other people's stories and content. And I, and that's very important on Instagram in particular to generate a following. And so you have to, you have to actually go in and comment on people's posts and, uh, and maybe search for a hashtag that you want to, that, that's going to pull in the right audience and then comment on people's posts, um, of course, in an authentic way. But I think that's a, a big part of Instagram and growing your influence there. I think that's really key to talk about the whole reply to a comment, right? Gary says you can't really have a big audience unless you actually engage with your small audience first. And I, yeah. so I think that's a great reminder of you've got to not just comment to the people who actually comment on your stuff and reply, but do what Kristen said and, and create relationships with others out there because that's, that's going to be critical. Look like you were going to jump in, Jeff. I'm uh, typing a reply to Jody here. She missed the two apps I mentioned. Thank you, man. We are like working all the technology today. We got Q&A. We got chat and Zoom here. We got Facebook Live down here. We are. Um, and, and by the way, real quick, I'll steal the mic back. We got Gary Harwin. What's up, Gary? How you doing, man? Uh, he's got some questions on Facebook ads. Um, so I know a couple of people on this panel will be probably well suited to take those. Um, he's asking about targeting profile and techniques you use to target first time home buyers you know, demographic interests, et cetera, et cetera. I, you know, short answer for me is yes, obviously, right? Um, use the Facebook targeting capabilities. Um, uh, so I don't know if anybody else wants to provide a more extensive answer to that. Well, yeah, so I'll, I'll jump in because Facebook ads is something I deal with quite a bit. Um, it's, uh, so demographic interest. So when you're doing, so one, Facebook ads, just so you know, like in a panel like this, it's, you're not going to get anything. You, I mean, you'll get some advice, but Facebook ads is a thing that you need to take a course on, or you need to spend, you know, some time on YouTube and, and listen to some of the people that have thrown some free targeting videos out there, how to's, uh, demographics really. And this is so important is if you guys, one is you sh should be using a CRM, but one of the reasons why you want to use a CRM is so you could create a persona or what we call it as an avatar of your perfect customer. That's when you know that your their likes, their loves, their wants, their needs, what they want before, what they want after. The more you know about your perfect customer, the more that it's easier to answer those targeting demographics, ages, uh, their income level, what they, um, I actually can't do income anymore, but you know, where, where, where they live and what, where they want to go, the more that you know about them, the better your, your ads can be received. The more that you have personal information, even though it's not completely customized to that individual, generally it is right. And so as far as interests go, um, one, one targeting option that I've seen that used to not be very good, but it is now just because Facebook has, has changed a lot of their targeting options is relocation 
is uh, Zillow and Trulia. Those ones are good interest and you could get a lot of leads. I have a lot of agents and loan officers running to those demographics. Now the creative has to be right. The copy has to be right. And once you do that though, those demographics and those targeting interests can be very lucrative as far as generating leads. You know, so one of the things I'll throw in there that I think is, is really key, Gary V always says, watch what I do. And so as you're thinking through and you're hearing uh, Jason talk about how important the creative and the copywriting is, is look at what other people are doing that's getting a lot of interaction and copy that, right? Don't try to reinvent the wheel because ultimately Gary says, gosh, if you see me do, you know, nine hashtags and you see me do that over and over again, I'm doing it because it works. If you see me do it once or twice and not again, guess what? It didn't work. And so keep that in mind that there's people out there that are way light years ahead of all of us that are great people to be watching. Um, people asking podcasting questions. we got a couple of amazing podcasters on here. What are you guys doing to get podcast followers, downloads, et cetera? Bribing people. Nice. What are you giving away, Jeff? You know, um, steaks, champagne, you know, high-end chocolates. So all right, well, all right. maybe Jason has a better answer than that. <laughs> <laughs> I just sent him to Jeff and say, you know, that Jeff, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff gave pays him off for me with his steaks and his wine. So <laughs> for, for, for podcasting, it's, it's just like you do with anything else. You, you market it, right? So you use Facebook, you try to find groups that where it makes sense, right? I just don't want to just throw, you know, as you know, for those in the mortgage coach knows I've maybe shared one or two of my podcast episodes in when I thought it fit the message, right? I don't want to be one of those guys that are just super self-promotional, but you do have to be self-promotional in a certain sense when it comes to your podcast. But with me, I'm confident enough in my podcast to know that I'm not shilling for anything, that I'm not throwing out anything to upsell them into anything else. In fact, you'll, you're, you're, you'll rarely hear anything like that from me, or at least I hope. And, uh, and so you just have to put it out on Facebook, interview other people. That's how you really get your podcast out there is interview people that have a good following, right? Well, also a good message, your guest, the content has to be on point first. You have to have the right guest. But generally, if you find number one, number two is a given, right? Like, for example, if I was to have Todd or Jeff or John and Kristen, and as I'm saying their names, I realize I've never asked any of them to be on my podcast, so I apologize. I don't do a lot of guests, but all of you will eventually be on my podcast. But um, it, And then link up with other ones, right? Link up with other people, cross-promote podcasts. I, I, I did that prior to a, a friend of mine named Neil Mathweg and his, his podcast, is, is link up with people, share content, promote each other. There is no one that's going to say no to, hey, would you share my podcast if I share yours sort of deal. Now, not the follow for follow crap, but really like you believe in that content, I'll be happy to share your podcast because I know people in my audience will get used from that. And so that is how I've grown. I've done maybe two, maybe three ads in the very beginning of my podcast when I was getting started. Everything else has just been, I share it on my profile. Other people share my content. I mention other people in my podcast and then tag them in it. And that helps as well. But if you find the right guest and that's the quickest way you could grow a podcast is get the right guest. They'll have the right following. They'll obviously share out themselves being on your podcast and you could grow pretty quick. See, I think that's great advice. And so we're getting other, other, uh, questions around other social media platforms. We've talked podcasts, Facebook, Instagram. Someone's asking about LinkedIn and it's always about context, right? You want to make sure that you're putting the right context. So LinkedIn we know is a little bit geared more towards businesses and people who want to read stuff. So Savage, who's not here, he's done an amazing job of writing articles on LinkedIn that actually give uh, uh, links back to the videos that, that we have here in the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind community. I know that Kristen and him have written some articles in the past. So I think what you have to do is think through, again, same thing, what's getting engagement, who's there watching. Um, anyone else have any other LinkedIn advice? Go you know, down. Todd, I, I, I think what I would say is, um, I have something that'll bring a lot of these questions together. Um, so one is, uh, look at what you start following. So I'm intrigued by a lot of this digital stuff. And I get served as a result, a crap load of ads that talk about digital technology and some grab my attention and some don't. So like, look at it, write it down. Like, why did I stop and watch that one? What was the hook? Um, you know, I signed up for a site called digital marketer and they basically had this, how to do a video sales letter. And it was just a talking head guy, but the first sentence or something caught me. And I wrote that down. I'm like, Oh crap. And I spent like 89 bucks and now I pay 295 bucks a month. Right. Like, cause I'm, I, I love the content. They roped me in on that thing. Second thing I would say is um, 
um, to, to get your podcast really big, I think you just need to join the industry syndicate. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Game was <laughs> plug. Yeah. No. So the uh, but 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 there's a takeaway, and it'll sweep into the LinkedIn thing too, right? So we're all talking about content and platforms. Know that a lot of the people that are coaching loan officers on stuff, we are their target audience, and we are intrigued with what they are saying and with what they are teaching us. And I think that just needs to be, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or live or LinkedIn, like, like we, we get captivated because we're like, oh, I want to know about this stuff. So I guess when, when we think of content, I, I, there's no one thing. <laughs> there is your customer, what do they want to hear and know? And then can you deliver that message at the right time? LinkedIn is, is new to me in the sense that I thought it was a dead network. Um, I am fascinated with everything that they're doing and all the video. And, you know, I put uh, two things on LinkedIn the other day and one already has, I don't know, 900 views and uh, another one has like 200 and something, right? Like, so it, it shocked me how fast it went out and how I had friends on the West Coast pinging me of something that I put on LinkedIn that I didn't put on Facebook. Um, and I hadn't talked to those people in two years. So uh, I, I think back to that idea of having a pillar piece of content and then spilling it into the appropriate network with how that network likes the content promoted. Yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Kristen. I just, I feel like LinkedIn is very underrated in a lot of these kinds of conversations. I mean, I, I'm constantly shocked by how much, how many views I'll get on a, a stupid post on LinkedIn. I mean, they're stupid. I, but I do think everything, everything you post on LinkedIn should be pretty quality in a sense because it is a more professional network. Um, but I, I always want to be on Instagram or whatever, but that's where my audience engages way more on LinkedIn. And, and the, the analytics do show that there's you know, I can't remember how many daily active users, maybe Jason, Jason knows, but, um, but I would say respond to your audience and how, what they are responding to as well. I, I love to write long articles and I do think that having a core quality piece of content adds a ton of credibility and is important as kind of a staple, but the posts that get the most engagement are short, you know, photos with a quick, thing about a quick yep. post about it you know people are consuming content very very quickly and have a short attention span so you got to think about what what's engaging them i could not agree with kristen more it linkedin is is definitely if it competes with facebook is my number one network by far and it used to not be that way like john i thought it was a dead because I used to, I was consulting for LinkedIn before they were LinkedIn way back in the day. And so it used, to, it was a dead network until they changed their algorithms and they're continuing to do, now they're making groups more effective and, it, and it's professional. So a lot of the stuff that people hate about Facebook with all the political nonsense and all that other stuff that they don't like seeing, LinkedIn is generally pretty business. So if you're doing that, remember, if you, if you love posting about what you post about on Facebook, it's not going to resonate well on LinkedIn. Unlike Facebook, hashtags work on LinkedIn. Long form content works on LinkedIn. You don't have to do video or images, quick little hits. I've had literally 10,000 views, a ton of comments and shares and likes on a three sentence post that I've done on LinkedIn. And it, it just, it, it engages. And, but the, the biggest thing that I, I hear, which is the, the, the biggest misconception about LinkedIn from a, uh, from a loan officer's perspective or a real estate perspective is that they consider that a B2B network, which essentially it is because you have business people. But guess what? They buy houses. They sell houses. Those are, they have jobs. Those are the people you want to network with. Like in, I, in the same breath, they're like, I'm going to this BNI event or I'm going to this networking event, but I don't think LinkedIn has the right people. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, well... Don't know how you got to that, but, and I get it, right? LinkedIn was, but everything Kristen said is hundred percent. I am shocked at my, my engagement is through the roof on LinkedIn compared to my other channels. It is, if you're, if you want to be an ex known as an expert, you want to be known as a thought leader, you want to put good information out there. LinkedIn is the way to go. Love it. Love it. And I think you just heard it. It's just got to be, take that content, repurpose it, throw it over there and, and see what happens. Um, Adam's asking a question around testimonials. He's posting one every Tuesday from Zillow. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Is that bragging or is that like a get a big high five? What's your thought? Uh, well, it, sorry, go ahead, John. Uh, you know, so social survey is the one that I always see all plastered all over Facebook and everything. Um, to me as a consumer, 
it's annoying. Um, at least that one is just because it's the same thing over and over again. And I don't really see a pretty graphic. The ones where there's a nice graphic and the type is nice and that stuff, I, I actually do get engaged with those. I think it's a, a good idea if done well. Yeah. So testimonials is social proof. That's how consumers are going to find you. Now, generally that's going to be somewhere on Zillow, on Zillow and on Yelp or on Google. So you want to focus on those three networks, mostly for your testimonials, but putting them on every Tuesday is fine. Right now, what John said is true is like sometimes, and you got, you got, and you could go to social survey and actually reduce that. So it's not all the time now. And it's going to be extremely annoying if you don't post any other content and you yeah. just allow those testimonials to come through because then that is like, you know, hashtag humble brag to the extreme. So and, you that, just, and that's what I'm seeing, Jason. That's yeah. all I'm really seeing. It. Exactly. It, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. And, and it's true. Right. But you definitely want to have that out there because that's how people are going to make their decisions. Right. It's the, you know, my friend Chelsea Pites calls that online cues to make offline judgments. Right. How they see you online is how they're going to think about you offline. Right. And so people will trust like, look, guys, we're talking about people are totally trusting a stranger to come to your house, know where they live to pick you up and take you somewhere that you've never met. Right. On your phone like that, like, uh, you know, not too long ago, that'd be like, wow, that would be super creepy. I don't want them to have all that stuff. It's about efficiency when it comes down to it. Right. We, we've we've gotten there as a society now. So play into that. But again, you have to just say just like with being self-promotional, there's ways to do it. So it doesn't come off as you being overly self-promotional or being overly braggadocious about your, uh, about what you do. Right. So just, and I think doing it once, once a week, perfectly fine. Well, I think those are varying opinions too. So that's awesome. What do you think of Jeff? I just want to add to that the reminder um, to use uh, testimonials as stories because that's basically what they are. It's a story of somebody you've helped. And so you can take that testimonial. It's one thing to just post a, you know, a text that's, you know, talking about five stars and that's all well and good and needed, especially about, right, the uh, various sites that people look for, for online reviews. But that's also a story opportunity for you to take it, do a one minute video on LinkedIn and just, you know, again, find that relevant story where you can connect to what do you love about doing the loans and why is this story relevant, right? People will relate and connect to that because if it's not that person, it's somebody they know that the story is going to be relevant for I think that's, I think that's really critical. All right. So we got seven minutes left. Um, why don't we just go around and everyone sort of give sort of your closing thought for 90 seconds on sort of, Hey, what else do you want to add before we, we kick everybody off here? I'll go in reverse order, John, so that, you know, you don't have to be the last one this time. Right? Like give your parting words here, my friend. Yeah. So, um, uh, I've been on several of these, uh, you know, zoom calls with Dave Savage and you Todd and I, I, You'll always hear me talk about that ninja selling book. I love that book. It's an old school relational sales book for real estate agents. And there's a chapter in there. It's called uh, you're either visible or invisible. And I think what's happened is just sales, the sales cycle continues to change, but the, the, the meat behind the message has stayed the same. People need to see you. They need to know what you stand for. They need to know what you're good at and they need to know when they should turn to you. And I think, this idea of producing a tremendous amount of content is so that you can spread that out of this crazy mass market, like never before. And, you know, uh, Gary Vee said something like David always beats Goliath. Right. And that's sort of like, that was a cool tone because he said like everyday people like me and you can advertise as if we're some like massive hundred billion dollar brand. We are, it's a level playing field. It's all about the content. Love it. All right, Jeff, closing words. Uh, yeah, so I want to kind of close out with this theme. Uh, and this is a comment that Kirk has here. And um, I don't know, I always kind of think about, you know, how I get, I'm going to answer this question because, um, you know, everybody's, you know, what gets the attention is what's sexy, right? The bright, shiny object, right? Social media, online, Facebook ads, and things like that. And this is what Kirk's talking about here. And, and I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a believer in this as well, is that particularly when it comes to the context of loan officers capturing real estate agents and their attention. Um, and, and knowing that if you look at the NAR statistics, right, eight, nine out of 10 people are still using a realtor. 88% um, roughly of the people finance their home, right? And, and, and technology has not displaced us yet. 
Um, and my argument is, is that it's not going to. Um, and so we don't have time to get into a whole conversation as to what the impact is going to be. But my point for Kirk here is I understand that there's a lot of noise and it can be confusing and you're wondering if this is going to pay off. Um, and, and, and is this, uh, what does he say here? Is time spent better off doing the old fashioned calling face to face meeting, face to face meetings, handshaking, et cetera. Um, I would say you got to do both Kirk, um, because, um, it's, you got to take the online offline and vice versa. And I'm a big believer in that when it comes to partnering with real estate agents, your, your quickest, shortest path is going to be face to face. It's a matter of how do you get there though? How do you show up and look different than every other loan officer and not repeat what everybody else is doing, such as the cold calling and pitching and, and all that kind of stuff. That's where your content and your value comes into play. Uh, intelligently targeting real estate agents online and offline um, through providing, you know, obviously I'm a big fan of teaching educational classes for real estate agents because it casts a wide net, allows you to accelerate everything that goes into building likability and trust. And then you can move that online and continue that conversation and dialogue. So you got to do both is, is the answer. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. How about you, Jason? Yeah. So I, I agree with a lot of what John and Jeff said. I will say though, in this, and this isn't just my personal opinion because this is just how I feel, but I've had a lot of loan officers in the last few months come to me, the face to face, the calling is fine, but guess what? They don't answer their phones as much if they don't know that number. Now, some agents do because they want all that stuff, but they don't. You go by the office, they're not in the office, especially when you have big brokerages like EXP that don't have brick and mortar. So yes, you do need to do the offline with the, with the, the, with the agents that are still doing that. But for the most part, you can't scale that because that's a lot of time driving to somewhere, spending time, blocking off hours at a time to just call, call, call. Those have been proven to be less and less effective year after year after year, and they will continue to be less and less effective. You can't scale your brand and you seeing them on the channels that they are already on. And that's Facebook, that's Instagram, that's LinkedIn. So you should still do whatever works. I will never be an absolutist and say, don't cold call, don't door knock, don't do whatever you happen to do. But you got to understand, you got to be real with yourself. Is that truly working? Is that moving the needle for your business? And is that going to continue to be effective? You don't want to buy stock in a radio company, right? You don't want to buy stock in a taxi company because it's less and less effective. It still works. People still use them, but that's going to be less and less effective year after year. And so, you know, the last thing I'll, I'll say is that you want to be custom. And that was a big message at Agent 2021. And I think that plays into everything that every one of the, the speakers here have talked about is that you got to be you, you got to be different. You got to be, and again, you don't have to come up with a persona. You don't have to come up with this new way of doing stuff. Just be you. I know it's easy to say to be authentic and to just be you, but be different. Be the, don't do everything. Don't send out all the flyers that every other loan officer is sending out. Don't be to just point. Don't be the loan officer that's going by the office and saying, Hey, can I do coffee? Here's my rate sheet here. Basically saying the same script that every other loan officer 10 times before them said, and 10 times after you say, do what Jeff does, teach classes, learn from courses out there, learn how to run the best Facebook ad, spend 40 hours mastering that Facebook ad that you know agents can crush it with, then teach class after class after class to agents. And if you don't think that they'll appreciate it, they will because I've made a living off of doing that. Awesome. Awesome. Well said. How about you, Kristen? Okay. Well, I have loved getting this recap the agent 2021 and this this little session i think um some summed everything up really well um uh, but to jason's point the be custom piece and find your voice that's really what i felt like was the biggest theme for me um uh, but find what is is niche for you what it, what is the thing that you can be custom about whether it's being a coffee expert or whatever and produce more content around it uh, and not be afraid to travel into new territory. I mean, I do think every social media platform is like its own country and you need to understand the norms and, and behavior of that country. Um, so do a little bit of research, but don't get lost in the research. Don't get lost in the tools. Um, just start putting yourself out there. I do say spend time reflecting first on what is that custom piece for you and reflect and then start um, just putting it out there. So. Oh, that was so awesome. All right. So I'll throw a couple of last things out there. It's funny because Kristen, you reminded me of John Henry, who was the lunchtime yeah. keynote speaker, and he was awesome. And he said, there's riches in the niches. And then he also said, I like to be where other people aren't. And that totally, you yep. nailed uh, both of those. So I love that. You know, I would just close it off with the idea that Gary said that um, 
the person who is ever closest to the consumer and provides what they want wins. So just get busy, right? Don't worry about how you look. Don't worry about what you say. Just be you transparently and start recording videos and see what people respond to, right? You're going to find out if someone watches it five times, they weren't interested. If you see people watch it 55 times, then they're more interested. You're followers, your friends, they'll tell you what they're, what's interesting. So just put out a lot of content and see what works. Um, this recording will be up onto the, the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel and also in our Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind for those of you who joined in late. Uh, I would recommend all of you follow the people that you saw here today on this screen because they're all doing this at a really high level and they're all experimenting and trying and seeing what works along the way. So you'll learn a lot from all of them. Thank you for being here on behalf of Dave Savage and the whole crew at Mortgage Coach. I'm Todd Bookspan with Win by Noon, and thank you all for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Peace out. Thanks, Todd. Thanks for this. It was fun.